Hi, my name is Stephen Fluen. This is Demos with Angular. Today I'm going to be walking you through one of the cool new tools that's coming from the RxJS team. It's a tool designed to help you migrate from the RxJS version 5 uh, up to the best practices that exist in RxJS 6. If you're not ready to adopt these best practices, you can definitely go ahead and install the RxJS Compat library, uh, or if you're using ng-update uh, from the Angular team, this tool will do that for you automatically, but eventually you want to get on these best practices. And so what the uh, RxJS tool does is it uses TSLint under the hood to apply transformations to your code that adopt the latest and best practices. All right, so what I want to show off here is the cool, awesome tooling that helps developers get from the standards and practices that were available to us in RxJS 5 and move over to the new file paths and the new ways of doing things in RxJS 6. But in order to illustrate this, I'm actually going to go out and build this a little bit in the wrong way. And so I'm going to take an existing Angular application using v6 that was created with the CLI. So I'm going to add the RxJS Compat library, and what this will do is this will give us the ability to do things in the way that things were done with RxJS version 5. And now I'm actually going to build out a small, tiny little Angular application. So I've scaffolded out this via the CLI. We're just going to jump directly into the app component. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to replace all of this. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and pull down a list of repositories from GitHub. This is just one of my standard go-to APIs. And so we're going to say ng4 equals let repo of repos. And so we're going to need an observable of repos, which we'll define in just a second. And then in here, we'll say repo.name. And so uh, this is a relatively simple template, and we just need a observable of uh, array of repositories that we will store in repos. So let's jump now over to the app component. Uh, so in order to do this, we're going to need a HTTP client. So let's just add HTTP client module. Just import that from the right place in at your slash common slash HTTP. Uh, so that import will now give us the ability to do HTTP requests, and then we're going to inject that into our app component here. So we'll create a constructor, and we'll say HTTP is of type HTTP client, and then we're going to go ahead and import this from at a your slash common slash HTTP, which looks right. Uh, now let's say let path equals, and we'll just use a standard path I've got from GitHub. So this is using the GitHub search functionality, just using the GitHub API, very simple. And now what we're gonna do, let's just change this to a const so TSLint doesn't yell at us. Uh, now I'm gonna make an HTTP request. And so we talked about this being a list of repos. And this is actually gonna be an observable of array of any. And so if we want to actually refer to observable by its type, I'm going to import it. And so again, I'm going to do all of this in the way that you used to do this in RxJS version 5. Import observable from RxJS slash observable. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually use that observable. So let's say this.repos equals hp.get. Let's give it a type of uh, any here and then I'm going to pass it the path. And so now the shape of this API is not actually what we want. So if you take a look at uh, what the actual JSON returns, you're going to see we're going to get back an object with the items we actually need. So we need to get the items out of this object. And so the way that you do that in RxJS version 5 is that we would need uh, something like the map operator. Uh, and I'm going to do this the old way. So I'm going to import rxjs slash add slash operator slash map. So obviously this is not the way that you want to be doing this. Um, you could also, for example, um, you could be using an import like rxjs slash add slash operator uh, observable slash of. So let's say that you wanted to do something like um, other observable And then let's say we wanted to say this dot other observable equals observable dot of. We'll just give it a value of test, for example. 
Um, so as I was saying, uh, here's a bunch of things that you can do in the kind of old way. So we call these side effect imports. Uh, these are not desirable because they don't allow tree shaking. Uh, and we're also importing things from the, the place that they used to be. So let's actually go ahead and uh, use that map operator. So this is a side effect operator, so map exists directly on the observable, uh, which is not the best practice. Now you want to be using the pipe operator. And we're going to say, take the data and return the data.items property. So this is very common code. I've written this code lots of times. Uh, this was the best practice uh, early in the cycle of RxJS 5. Um, and let's just quickly jump over to our application. And this is working, right? So we've got a fully rendered list. Uh, you can actually see that this is working. I'll make a small change just to show you that this is all live coding. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, I want to do this better, right? I want to now remove the compatibility library. I want to update my project. Uh, and the very good news is that there is a fantastic command line tool to help developers do this. And so I'm going to yarn at uh, globally add something called rxjs-tslint. And so this is a bunch of tslint rules for rxjs that automatically know how to fix a lot of the things that we would do as part of the 5x version of rxjs and migrate them into the 6.0 version, both in terms of paths, in terms of where we do our imports and how we do side effect imports, uh, as well as swapping out things like this dot map for a dot pipe operator that then calls map as a local operator. And so the, the magic here is as we installed the RxJS TSLint project, we got out this RxJS 5 to 6 migrate tool. Uh, and this tool just takes one parameter. I can pass it my TS config. So I'm going to use the TS config that lives in my source folder. So TS config.app.json. What's going to happen? This is going to happen very, very fast. But as soon as I run this, it's going to go through my whole project using the TS config and it's going to fix my usage of all these things. And so let's give this a try. So let's uh, just clear this up. And now let's run RxJS 5 to 6 migrate. And again, tsconfig.app.json. So as soon as I hit enter here, I'm going to jump back to Visual Studio Code and we'll kind of watch it making all these changes live. So you see, it's already rewritten the import of observable to RxJS. It swapped out the side effect import of both of and map. It joined the two imports from of and observable into a single import from RxJS. Uh, and then it actually rewrote my use of the side effect version. So this used to say observable.of, uh, and this one used to say dot pipe or dot map directly, and now we're invoking it in the nice, lettable way where you can actually uh, ensure that everything's tree shaking and that you're only getting exactly what you want in the final bundle. What, what's happening under the hood here is uh, previously when you would import uh, rxjs slash add slash operator slash map, for example, that code would actually run at the beginning of the application boot up and it would modify the prototype of the observable object. And so every code that ran after that would actually have the map uh, operator as a function on that object. But the problem with this is that it ends up with a bunch of side effects. So if you called this in one of your files, but not another, uh, you might be able to access the map in the second file, but it wouldn't be clear why or how that was working. So under the hood, uh, everything's been migrated now to what are called pipeable operators. Uh, for a little while, they were called lettable operators. And what this means is that instead of having these methods uh, being attached onto the observable, they're kept separate so that you can call them and chain them in a different way uh, using this pipe command. And so every observable now comes with a pipe command out of the box that then you can pass in all of these individual operators and they're going to do exactly what you expect. And so the benefit is uh, these pipeable operators end up as local variables within a specific context, within a specific scope of your application. And you always know exactly where it's coming from. And you can be sure that uh, you're not having these operators uh, kind of be randomly being added to your code or added in a way that we call side effecty. The other big change that exists in RxJS is the fact that we have now uh, moved some of the imports to try and make future application development simpler. So previously you would import subject or observable from a, a deeper import path such as RxJS slash subject or RxJS slash observable. Uh, now you're able to do all of these imports from just RxJS. And so 
Uh, this has been enabled and empowered by a bunch of changes under the hood in RxJS. There was, so there was a lot of refactors, a lot of improvements to the way that the package is structured. Uh, and the benefits are that uh, going forward, the paths should be much simpler, easier to understand, uh, and developers should not be getting into edge cases that they don't expect.